caution, it has been occasioned by the recent incidences of building collapses across Nigeria, in Jos, in the FCT, in Onicha, and in Ogun states. Well, this morning, we're going to be joined virtually by a project slash facility manager, Mr. Bola, who is standing by to join us virtually. But in our studio, we're joined by constitutional lawyer, Barista Elias Ofo. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Barista. Yeah, yeah good morning. It's wonderful you. to have you here. Yeah, well, same here. Pleasure is mine, yeah. Now, this is a very sad development, and whilst we have these conversations, we'll be looking at some of the assets and reactions. But to start with, in Joss, where the highest case fatality was recorded as a two-story building collapsed in the Busabuji area of Joss, uh, leaving teachers and students trapped beneath. Now, sadly, an entire family was wiped out. The wife, on finding that her four children had passed on, collapsed on receiving the news. Her husband, as well, also suffered the same fate now leaving that family amongst one of the most notably one, uh, notably recognized families who lost loved ones in that school building collapse. Now, the Plateau State Governor, His Excellency Caleb Mutfuang, also paid visit to the victims in the hospital. We're looking at some of those photographs uh, whilst we get uh, Barista Elias' thoughts. Now, Barista, the challenge here is in terms of buildings having to pass structural and integrity tests in line with the Nigerian Urban and Regional Planning Act responsible for regulating the development and the use of land and boat buildings in Nigeria. Uh, many say it's because reg regulation has been very lax. That's why these incidences are happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's no gain saying the fact that uh, regulation is uh, quite uh, porous in this part of the world. Um, I, I've given an example. Uh, sorry, I just have to start with it. I lived in Europe for a while. Um, in, in my apartment, at least, I, I witnessed regulators coming to ask, do you have any, any question? It is not just about the building owner. It's about the structure. What is the regulatory body doing about it? I was asked questions. I was told, um, do you have any issue? Do you have any leakage, anything concerned, whatsoever? Just, and the man was with, with a notebook. I witnessed him coming like two, three times throughout my stay. And then the building owners, the landlords, were, you see them sending emails, sorry, if you have any concern, quickly tell us about it. So we address it. We are sorry we didn't tell you on time and all that. We had regulators were there. That's what it should be. Building houses, um, it's not something to, to trifle with. It, it has a lot to do with human life. It, it, it goes down to the academia where they are studying building construction, where they are studying architecture, structural engineering, and all that. The way the medical sciences are strict with licenses, with accreditation, that is the way it should be. Down to the polytechnics, down to even unrecognized institutions, they study architecture. They study all these courses that, that have to do with building. It should not be like that. It should not be proliferated. It should be, it should be organized. It should be regulated. It should be put under control. Now, talking yes. regulations, let's see if we now have Mr. Abologa uh, Digbeniga online to join us. Uh, uh, we would hope that uh, we have connections. Uh, Mr. Agbeniga, if, if you can check that your visuals are on, it, it may seem as though you turned off your camera. Check that your camera is on because we can get audio feeds from you, but we're yet to see visual feeds from you. Mr. Agbeniga put out a publication on his LinkedIn page and it had the subject Nigeria Building Regulations and Enforcement, quite a very detailed document by Mr. Agbeniga who had noted several building regulations and codes in place to ensure safety and structural integrity of Nigerian buildings, but the challenge being on the Nigerian Building Code, the Nigerian Urban and Regional Planning Act, and the standard organizations of Nigeria, or some organizations that have regulations to mandate enforcement and compliance, much like Barista Ofo has said. Now, now, during the course of our conversation, we did see pictures of Governor Kolek Mitfuang in the hospital in Jos, where some victims of the building collapse were receiving treatment. But whilst uh, Mr. Adigbeniga looks to establish his connection, sadly, this also happened in the FCT. Uh, Mr. Adigbeniga, good morning to you. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks for joining the show. Good morning to you. We just cited reference to the publication you made on your LinkedIn post you had cited some organizations were saddled with regulating buildings and ensuring structural integrity. Can you please buttress this point you are looking to make 
so that our viewers at home can follow the conversation. Now, some challenges with uh, network there, but we're hoping that whilst Mr. Adegbeniga can establish a better connection, he would rejoin us. Now, before we look at the situation in the FCT, you were talking about regulations. Mr. Adegbeniga has taken the pains. Before these issues happened, back in 2022 was when he made that publication. He called on the Standard, regulation, uh, Standard Organization of Nigeria, the Nigerian Urban and Regional Planning Act, and the Nigerian Building Code as some reference documents that are supposed to make sure that it is followed to the latter in terms of structural integrity. Now, we see some artisans who are employed to erect these buildings, uh, not minding if the architect in question also has the required qualifications to be a site of a facility manager on the project. Yes, um, it's actually a myriad of problems. The problems are legion. We don't even know where to start. The construction, the building industry is one industry, is one area that is least regulated. Ironically, it has a lot to do with life, safety and all that. It is very unfortunate that things we are supposed to pay great attention with, to, we are not doing it in this country. In 2021, if I'm correct, there was a building collapse in Iko Lagos. That was actually the eye-opener for even regulators, for a lot of even policymakers in Nigeria. Um, 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 everybody, in fact, in fact, majority of the people sh uh, 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 shouted in, in, in despair regarding that because many people died. Then, um, you look at the regulation you talked about, the Urban and Regional uh, Planning Act, the Nigerian Building Code, you find that enforcement becomes the problem. The enforcement mechanisms are very weak. How do we go about it? Um, I don't even know. A, a lot of things keep coming to my mind. First of all, that particular issue in Ikoi, Lagos, a um, report had it that after investigation, extra six floors were put on approved 15 floors. That's now, now, that, now, that is similar to the case of what happened in Jos, where, um, according to reports, the building was initially um, a bungalow, and then two stories were added to it without proper, um, you, you know, I mean, how do you add two stories on a building that has a foundation for a bungalow? That is where the problem started from. That is a problem. Uh, let, let me shock you. Under the, under the Urban and Regional uh, um, um, Planning Act, I think 1992 or thereabout, um, and some other, or some other regulatory framework, there are punishments, there are stiff penalties for violators. And um, when you look at it, you find out that these things are not even uh, are followed. On the flip side, um, some of these laws are very archaic while doing that, they are very, very archaic. For instance, pre prescribing um, 10,000 naira fine or three months imprisonment for failure to obtain a, a, a building approval and all that, or failure to, failure to violate plans that you're given to build, uh, it, it's just a charade. Is a child's play. So to, to start with, some of these laws need uh, re repeal. They have to be repealed. They have to, to, to made to run with the realities of the time. And, and, and do, do you think that the regulatory bodies are compromised in the sense that developers, building developers, have a way of, you know, beating or going around the corner to bribe these regulatory officials to ensure that they have their way against the codes and ethics of what they are supposed to do when building. That is actually stating the obvious because we know the country we are living in. They are compromised obviously. Even in the FCT where we are living, uh, you see a lot of things happening. If a building is marked, all you need to do is to reach out to those people that mark it. The next minute, no, nobody comes there again. That's just a forgotten story. Another thing is doing the work in abnormal way, cutting corners in enforcing the law. For instance, if you know that I'm abiding by the law and you're coming up. Because Nigerians, one thing I know for sure, I've said it a lot of times in this particular session. I, I, I've said it that Nigerians are so low abiding. Nigerians are low abiding, so to speak. In principle, they are so ab low abiding. But there are so many things uh, around compliance. There are so many things around enforcement. If you go about um, engendering vendetta, in the name of trying to extort money from people, yeah. they, will know, they, they will just think it's just the usual thing. 
If I want to build a house, if I want to erect my building, what I just need to do is to just go ahead. I know they're going to come here and all that. For instance, in some other places in the country, you, you, you see the, 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 the syndrome, what they call a Monile in Lagos yes. and um, in, in elsewhere. In any good, they call it in the one, the people that own the, the yeah, land. Right. In Abuja, too, they, they have a, a native people that come to seek their own pan of flesh and yeah. all that. And, and have settlements and courts yes. where. So, all this bedevil the industry, all this clog the will of the industry. If there are no regulatory framework to streamline, to make specific the rules, the codes, and make it enforceable in explicit terms, all these things are, they, they are going to continue to happen. Now, I will have the mindset that it's just to cut corners. There's no particular rule guiding this. All you need to know is just go in and build your house. Nobody gives a damn about it. Just do it, and then when they come, just settle them and all that. And, and so, now, so that's, that's if, another angle of it. If we would look at the larger picture um, in, in the Abuja space now, let's talk about uh, developers in Abuja. You have the developer who is probably not an architect or an engineer, maybe just a businessman who has money and wants to develop an estate, right? Hires an architect, hires engineers, and those two people in turn hire artisans who work for them. And probably there is already a building approval from development control at FCDA that states that each unit in this estate should be a four-bedroom, uh, fully detached duplex. Now, this businessman wants to make more money. He tells his architect, okay, we have gotten an approval for this. I want you to make it six bedrooms. Who do you think now? This, the architect works for the developer. He is the one with the money. I mean, he dictates what they do. Who do you think in this large picture now should be held accountable and responsible for whatever goes wrong? Remember, it starts from the developer who wants something that development control has not approved and the development control officials who are compromised. What do you make of this, Barrister? And what you have to understand is that the framework is there. The law prescribes monitoring in terms of building. There's even um, a system of using a drone. Um, in some other parts of the world, they use drone to monitor uh, building construction and then the, the metric, the specifics of the yes. building. And you get data and then know whether there's a compliance and all that. That's what they call them. Um, what do they call it again? Building information modeling. It's a, it's a modern day kind of um, uh, building mechanism to check compliance and make sure everything goes in, in, in order. I think, I think it was enforced, it was operationalized um, sometime in the, in the, I think in early 2000 or, or thereabout. Yes. But then monitoring is, is, is the key. That's the thing that it has to come from regulatory bodies. From time to time, you check compliance. Is this thing going in line with how it should be? You have the technology, you have the know-how. I don't see any reason why the architect should be left to, 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 to just to uh, do whatever he likes because he wants to cut corners. Another part of it is um, the laws are also not adequate because there's no particular law, no particular building regulation that says you need to employ licensed people to build your house. I have never, never seen it in the letters of the law. That is another area. No law says that, that you need to get a licensed, a building a licensed asset artisan or anything. In, in other countries, even as an artist artisan, you need to have your Plum, requisite plumbers, license. Plumbers, plumbers have licenses and all that. And all they that. have laws. Even our neighbors there in South Africa, you need to show your number. You need to show your approval before you can even start up that. Now, now let's yes. quickly not forget that we have a, a, a ball out on, on Zoom link this morning. Uh, Abola, I know you've been following the conversation. Let's get your thoughts as well as this issue continues to unfold. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning to yeah, you. Yeah, I think Barista, I think Barista, now, the issue we have in Nigeria right now, even though they are bringing goods and regulation, it every construction. The issue is that most clients and most site engineers don't follow all this code. Now, uh, in Nigeria right now, right, right down from your foundation, from, from foundation to building construction. Now, let me give you an illustration. Because I, I, I follow closely the, the, building, the, 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 the building that collapsed in Lagos and the one that collapsed in just recently. Now, the issue we have with, with all these buildings is that, is what, is that they're, not, they're not following the proper building construction methods. Now, first of all, foundation be built. The type of soil on the on the on this particular part of land, how is it like? 
was that his soil test carried out? Uh, are you using that foundation? Was there a structural engineer following the building process? Do you even have a structural design? If you check some of these buildings, all these things are not there. Because I saw I saw that just building before it collapsed. I saw I see the, the picture of the building. And I, I, I see that it's like it's like it's like the original design was no was not was not what it's, it's like it's like you patch the building probably after after doing after construction maybe to get more space and accommodation. And I saw some of the columns. You get they are, they are so very, very slender to carry the weight the, the weight of that building. And mind you, this is not a residential building. This is, this is a building that you have students. You have students, you have some people, a, a, a building that is carrying a lot of load. They are prone to collapse. Do you get? And um, by the time I was talking about probably our our building enforcement, our building enforcement, people that are supposed to enforce the building laws and regulation, they are compromised. That's the case right here in Nigeria. You see these guys they go to site to enforce all these laws and and before you know it they are they are being bribed to to get things done and they get and they look the other way right down from your architectural design right down from the type of soil you are using everything has to be followed and if all these people have been adhered to i, I would like to you we won't have anything like building collapse in nigeria i've seen we have seen we have seen even right down to your material selection type of stone type of value type of reinforcement you use uh, Mr. Bola, let's talk about that process of selection. I did look at the piece you wrote, which we referenced er earlier, and in your wealth of experience as a project manager, uh, how do you better advise clients who come to you, for instance, and are looking to cut corners? Now, mm, I won't like it, but yes, I've lost a lot of clients because because most of them most of them just want to cut corners and get things done. I've asked mine that would be like I have money. I want, I, want, I want to see a structure standing, and they are not ready to go through the normal processes. You get and 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 most most time, I, you know, if I see that I can't I can't get them to get I can't I can't get them to do the right thing. I just I just allow them to get someone else that that will do it. You get I've I've I, 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 I had a client about three years ago that just that, that was like I want a building I want a building fast fast. I was like, sir, we have to, we have to do a. I was saying that um, we have to do a soil test. We have to, we have to do a, a, a actual design. From there, we do structural design. From there, we do a, we do a mechanical design, electrical design. I was telling that 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 all these design can take us like two months, three months to, to get them ready and get and get it started. But no, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. I, I wanted to start laying foundation the following day, and I was like, sir, it's not done that way. It's not possible for us to start work that way. And I had to walk away. And before I knew it, the second one day, I, I, I already saw them digging the foundation of, the, of, of, this, of, of this particular structure. Now, by the way, it's, it's a question of integrity. Have... Whilst uh, Mr. Bola's integrity in this case saw him turn down the deals, many would take up such uh, 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 deals and then endanger lives. How do we find a way to incorporate monitoring and enforcement in such cases? Do you think at this point the Nigerian Urban and Regional Town Planning should? provide online portals for Nigerians to report such buildings anonymously. Absolutely. That's that's another part of it. That's another part of it. Awareness. Information dissemination. Yes. Making the public to be aware. Sensitizing them on infractions. If you notice such a thing, create a reporting mechanism where people can report and say, we don't understand this building. We don't understand. This building just came up in less than one month. So let us, where we are reporting, we are now raising alarm for you to come and investigate it. That's what it should be. It's not all about, um, ah, he has the money, he has the money and all that. Oh, wow, it is coming up. Wow, the building has been erected. So that's what it should be. Information dissemination. Sensitizing the people about it. That's the thing there. And if the structure, if structure is standing, there should be inspection too. Inspectors should come once in a while. If it's already occupied, they should come and ask questions. So, for instance, some people will report that, sorry, we see cracks. We hear cracks, like tiny cracks in the night. For instance, where I stay, at times I, I start noticing that the, 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 there's a kind of oil drip on the wall. Yeah. I did my findings and they said it's the paint. And I said, okay, good and fine. And I have somebody, the person confirmed it's the paint. It's the paint. So, so if it was, it's the POP that collapses. Yes. So that's another part of it. So I'm continuing to investigate it to ask questions. That's the awareness. I would ordinarily relax and say, okay, that's just the building. I, I know that this is, a, is an ultra modern building, so I don't need to worry. So the, the, the populace, the people should be sensitized. 
they should be told about it. The pros and cons of living in particular in certain houses and what you should expect and how, if you see this, you come and report to regulatory bodies. Now, That's what it now, should be. Now, Barrister, mind you, um, you know, the, the architect could do everything right. The developer could do everything right in terms of getting designs, in terms of getting approvals and all of that. But there's still another issue that um, sometimes we tend to overlook, which is the standard of the materials used in construction. Now, this also um, falls back to how the Standards Organization of Nigeria, uh, as a regulatory body, ensures that all of these materials, building materials, are up to standard. How do you think they can come into, um, you know, as part of these measures that you have now mentioned, where people can actually report if they notice something about a building? Because there are so many regulatory bodies. How can they work in synergy to ensure that um, buildings are safer for Nigerians to live in? Mm, I think the regulatory bodies, they have their own areas of, um, areas of interventions and all that. They have areas of um, 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 monitoring and, and stuff like that. The Standard Organization of Nigeria is not only building materials that they check. There are some other areas. They should make sure that everything. For instance, the building, of course, if I'm putting up a bungalow, it's, it wouldn't require the same material if I'm building a skyscraper. These are two different things. Yes. So there are specifications. It's for, it's for regulatory bodies to know that this is a building that is approved. This is that particular item. This is a particular rod, the, the diameter or the radius of the rod that is supposed to be used, maybe from the substructure to the superstructure. There should be procedure. And while the building is being erected, then inspectors should be coming around, taking them on arrest. That is how it's done in some other times. It's not all about that. It's all about gathering men and then you are doing it that everybody knows how to do it. And let me shock you. Majority of the people that build houses in Nigeria are just non-professional artisans. They are the major people that do the work because it's a cheap label. Yeah. You cannot hire these guys that are professionals to do that. For instance, if you, if you want the, 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 the house of the, of the vice president, probably it was being handled by Julius Beggar. They have professionals that do that. They even you see their cranes doing registered this and doing that. Construction companies as against yeah, yes. unregistered assistants. So you can't afford some of these guys. That's the thing there. That is even going too high. The average professional, maybe a qualified architect, you may not even be, when they look at it, no, 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 this is quite, way high expensive. Do uh, you understand? They go for undergraduates. They go for undergraduates. Maybe people that just learnt it by the wayside, they, yes. they need to use them and all. It's applicable to every other thing that we do in the country. Well, that, so that's part of the Let's also, at this point, get some reactions. And particularly in the FCT, one would think that uh, there should be at least an enforcement or regulatory body to oversight buildings and constructions. Quite sadly, over the weekend on Saturday, there was a report of a two-story building collapse uh, with uh, victims rushed to the Kubwa General Hospital. Now, this morning, we have uh, more reports greeting your screens following reactions of eyewitnesses who look to tell their stories. Let's take a listen to this eyewitness report and then we'll come back to other discussions on the show. This is Ella Onyeke. Okay. So, as a resident of the uh, what's really transpired? Yes. living in that building, left there yesterday, saying he noticed a car yesterday. So he left with his family. So 5 a.m. this morning, some people that are living there say the building started shifting. You understand? Mm -hmm. Started shifting. So some of them left. And they tried to notify others who are living there. So those ones, they knock at their door. Where they were didn't answer them so that they are inside. Some of them, they, 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 some of them left before the, the building collapsed, and some are still inside. And uh, some are still inside. 7 a.m. this morning is actually the time that this incident happened. So we are still praying for this lady called Melanie to come out safe and sound. So, I don't know so, what so far, so good. How many people have been rescued? Like, the ones I recorded is about, about four people. And then this lady is still there, Melanie, like, like I said, she's still the in copper. there. The copper. She's still in there. So, they 
are trying their best. So the people, the rescue team, and they are trying their best actually to bring her out. So we are still praying to God so that she will be active and sound. Okay, my name is uh, Mataya. So this morning, I think about to seven, that was when we had that rubbing sound. So I thought it was for my next compound. I for me to rush out. So I, only for me to rush out, and I heard, you know, commotion. You know, and now, we apologize for the quality of that footage. Uh, we'll look at all the incidences as it concerns reported developments in Onicha and in Oshun states. Well, according to publications on X, the incidents in Oshun state had three persons trapped, two rescued, with at least other persons reportedly unaccounted for uh, under the rubble of an uncompleted multi-story building that collapsed at the Ayetoro area of Oshobo the Oshun state capital. You'd also look at the, another publication talking about the situation in Onicha this morning with accompanying slides with photographs of the rubble as well. Now, Mr. Abola is still on uh, online with us this morning. Uh, let's get your thoughts uh, as it concerns these developments and what can be done in the interim to forestall future occurrences in this regard. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, there is something that they surely do. I, I, I know about it was very well that they surely carried out. So most times they carried out, we, we can government needs to start inspecting buildings right now. Because even even right there in Lagos, there are buildings that may, may seeing them, you know that these buildings, they are, they are seriously weak. They need to start demolishing some of these buildings. And they need to go out and start checking all these buildings, their social integrity. Because even as the, even as the building, you can check how strong the building is, check, out, check whether the column is still sand. You can check the quality of your reinforcement. Even as now, you, you should not wait for the government to come and do that for you. You can invite them to come and check your building. You feel like your building, you feel like your, your building has an issue. You can invite them. That please come and check my building integrity, and they will come. They will give you a report. They let you know that things, the building is weak, or you know you, you need to do some adjustment, or you need to reinforce the foundation. Then you, then you, you can go ahead and do it. Even as tenants, even as tenants. Um, I would say that there is, that there is nothing as a building suddenly collapsing. The, the, a building will give you a sign before it collapses. You see the sign. If as a tenant, you say that your building is showing all these signs, you should, should make a report to, the, to, to your landlord. And if your landlord is not... Oh, well, some connection issues with Abola there. We appreciate the point he was making. I'll come back to the studio, gentlemen. It's on also being our brother's keepers most persons look at buildings particularly in the lagos area on the mainland when some of these buildings might have stood the test of time over five decades six decades and you can see the buildings begin to tilt as though they're bowing to pressure of wind and many complain about some landlords having inherited that from their forefathers and not willing to part with it in terms of a demolition as he recommended how do we balance this uh, uh human concerns alongside what the regulations say Mm, outright demolition, uh, some buildings could, could be reinforced. There are several ways you could reinforce a building to make it um, very well. But the most important thing like uh, here, like Mr. Abola said, is um, um, reporting. reporting. There should be reporting mechanisms. That's another thing there. Because reporting mechanism ensures confidentiality, ensures um, um, the, the, the authenticity and even the integrity of the reporter and all that. It's not just about running to the police or running to wherever or telling your landlord. Your landlord could even see you as a mole. This is a, the, 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 the problem I've been having all this while. So that's why I keep saying there are ways to do all this. Even some laws prescribe reporting mechanisms. It should be part of our law. This is the way, this is the way, this is the way. Then whistleblowing. You have mechanism for protecting them. Anonymous reporting, anonymous messages. That's why I said there should be sensitization. The populace, the people should be told what to do. They should be sensitized on how these reports could go. On what if you notice in a building, what you should do. Or one or two things about the building. If you park into a building and notice such a thing, you could be advised to even vacate it and then make a necessary report. You must stay in that building and say, um, yes, I have to report on 